Hey everyone, Cody from Mac Telecom Networks. In this video, we're gonna do a full build using TP-Link products. All the TP-Link products that I have here are gonna be controlled by the Amada controller. You could either have the Amada controller stored locally on your laptop, or you could buy a hardware controller. If you guys are new here, please hit the subscribe button. Make sure to hit the thumbs up button. If you wanna hire me for network consulting, visit www.mactelecomnetworks.com. You can find us on Instagram at Mac Telecom Networks, and we have a Discord server I'll put in the description below. So this is gonna be our network topology. I did a couple other videos about the TP-Link products. It was kind of an introductory. This will be a full build. So at the top here, we have our internet network connection. So this is our ISP coming in to the TP-Link router. The TP-Link router model is the RL-605. From there, we will have a cable going from our LAN port to port one of our TP-Link switch, the TLSG2008P, and this link will be a trunk link. This switch has four ports that are PoE, so port one to four, and then four to eight are non-PoE. So on port two, we have our TP-Link hardware controller, which is the TP-Link OC200, and that's powered through power over ethernet. For an access point on port three of the switch, we are using the TP-Link EAP245. So the networks we'll be creating are as followed. The admin will be created by default. That's just the default uh, 192.168.0.1 that it gives the network. Then we'll be creating a staff network on 192.168.10.1 and the VLAN will be 10. Guest network 192.168.20.1, VLAN 20 and then IoT 192.168.30.1, which will be on VLAN 30. If you have already seen the initial setup, you guys could skip ahead. I'll have timestamps within the video for certain sections. So the first thing we need to do, we need to get the controller up and running. Right now, I don't know the IP address of it. I believe it defaults at 192.168.0.125, but a way we could find out for sure is by using a scanning app to scan our subnet. So if we go to our command line, we could type in IP config and we should have gotten an IP out of the 192.168 range, which we have 192.168.0.184. Our router is sitting on 192.168.0.1. So we could use advanced IP scanner and we could scan the whole subnet and press scan. It will tell you in the quick start guides the defaults for these pieces of equipment, but I don't have that with me right now. And we could see right here that we have an IP of 192.168.0.125, so we'll just go to that. And at the top, you could see that it shows the Amada controller. It says, welcome to use Amada controller. Please follow the wizard to set up the controller. So we'll go, let's get started. Here, we're just gonna give it a name. I'll call it Mac Telecom, select your country which I am in Canada, and then select your time zone, which I'm in Eastern time zone. And this is gonna be application scenarios. I'm just gonna say office and we'll press next. Under the configured devices, this is showing us our router, our access point and our switch. And we're gonna to wanna to adopt all of those into our controller. So I'm gonna select all of them and press next. Here, this would be to configure Wi-Fi, but we'll get into that after. So we'll press uh, skip. And here, this is where you're gonna to wanna to put in your username and password. So you'll put in your admin username and then your two passwords. If you wanna use the Amada controller as a cloud service, you need to register for an account and you would put your TP-Link ID and password in here. Right now, we don't have connection to the internet as I have a static IP and we haven't set that in the TP-Link router yet. So I'm just not gonna fill in that information and I'm gonna press next. This is just a summary of what we've done and I'm gonna press finish. So there is a Amada controller for your Android or iPhone. I will do that in a separate video on how to set the Amada controller and all your devices up through your phone. Now we need to put in our new username and password and press login. And this screen will just give you an overview of the Amada controller itself. This is the dashboard of our Amada controller. You can see the internet capacity and gateway, nothing showing up. I'm not too sure why. We do have a router that is connected. Maybe it's a feature that's coming in the future. We could see that we have one switch and one EAP. We could see that we have one site in one country, three devices and one admin. 
The cloud access right now is disabled. I will enable that later on. So on the left-hand side, we have our statistics. This is gonna give us some performance uh, statistics, switch statistics and speed test. There's the map and this is gonna show us how our gear is connecting to one another. We have our devices and this is gonna show us our devices that are currently connected to this controller and adopted. We could see the clients that we have right now. So I have my desktop and then I have the OC200, which is our hardware controller. We could go to insights, which is gonna show us our known clients, our past portal uh, authorizations. We don't have a portal set up, but I will be doing a portal in a different video. And then our rogue APs. And we also have a log of alerts that's happening. So right now it's saying failed to obtain the IP address for the WAN. There's no response. I have a static IP and we'll set that up. So to set that up, we're gonna go down to settings and then we're gonna to go to wired networks and then we'll go to internet. So if you have a dynamic IP from your ISP, you'll just use this and it should set up fine. For me, I have a static, so I'm gonna select static IP. I'm gonna fill in my IP address, subnet mask, and default gateway, as well as DNS servers. And once all that information is filled in, we're gonna press apply and we should be able to connect to the internet once this has provisioned. Now that our WAN's configured, we will be able to reach out to the internet. I'll ping google.ca and we're able to connect to google.ca. So the next thing to do is to set up our VLANs and networks. So we're gonna to wanna to click on LAN. And right now we just have the default set. So it's 192.168.0.1. I'm gonna create a new LAN. And the first one that we'll create will be our staff network. So we'll name it staff and it's gonna be using interface LAN. So this will allow this VLAN to trunk over our LAN port on our router. And the VLAN ID we're gonna to give to it is 10. The gateway will be 192.168.10.1 with a slash 24. So that will give us 254 working hosts. And then we'll press save. Next network we'll create is our guest network. And it will be using that same LAN interface. We'll give it VLAN ID of 20, gateway and subnet of 192.168.20.1 slash 24. We'll update the DHCP range and we'll press save. And the last network we'll create is our IoT network. It will go over the interface of LAN with VLAN 30 Gateway 192.168.30.1 slash 24, update the DHCP range and press save. All right, so now all of our networks are created. We need to go ahead and create some wireless networks. So we'll go over to wireless networks. Right now we have no wireless networks. There's no SSIDs. So we're gonna create new wireless network. We need to create an admin network. So we'll do it admin. We're gonna let it broadcast on the 2.4 and the five gigahertz. We'll allow every network to broadcast on that. We're not gonna select the enable guest. This will create firewall rules, which will block the guest from reaching any private IP subnet. We're gonna give it security of WPA personal. The WPA enterprise will be a radius server authentication. So I'll give it a secret password of test one, two, three, four. And since this is on the admin default network, we don't need to specify a VLAN and I'll press apply. The next wireless network we'll create is going to be our staff network. We'll give them the same bands and then we'll give them a security key of test one, two, three, four. This time we're gonna specify a VLAN. So we're gonna to wanna to click enable and then we're gonna give it VLAN 10. This way, when anybody connects to the staff network, they'll get an IP address out of the 192.168.10 subnet. And we'll press apply. Next, we'll create our guest network. And for this, we could enable the guest network policy. I'm gonna give it a password of test1234, and we're gonna give it the VLAN, VLAN 20, and then press apply. And the last network we'll create is our IoT network. Password of test1234, and then the VLAN ID will be VLAN 30, and we'll press apply. So by default on the TP-Link switches, every single VLAN will be able to trunk down these ports. These are set to the profile all. 
We only want to have the VLANs that we need going to the access point. So I'm gonna create a switch port profile with the three VLANs we created going out to the EAP245. So to do that, we're gonna go over to LAN and then we're gonna go to profile. Here you can see all the networks that we created. They will automatically create a profile, but we're gonna create a new profile. And then this will be called all VLANs. For PoE, we could keep the site settings. The native network will be our LAN, and then the tag networks will be staff, guest, and IoT. And then we'll press save. Now to make sure that only those VLANs go down the port to our access point, we needed to go to our switch settings and then edit port profile. Here we know our EAP is on port three, so I'm gonna go down to port three, and the profile that we're gonna select is the new profile called all VLANs, and then we'll press apply. And this is how you would specify a specific VLAN on a port. So if you wanted port four to be in the staff network, you would click the edit button, and then you would go to profile, and then you would select staff and press apply. So when you plug in a computer to that port, you're gonna get an address from the staff subnet. Okay, so since we didn't set up the cloud access at the beginning, cause we didn't have internet access, we could do it now. So we could go to settings and then go to cloud access. Here, I'm gonna hit the toggle switch. And then you wanna put in your email address and password that you have tied to your TP-Link account. If you don't have one created, you could go to register now. And then we're gonna to wanna to hit login and bind. And up at the top, you could see it's connected. And if you want to manage this controller through the cloud so you could do it remotely, you'll wanna to go to https colon slash slash amata.tplinkcloud.com. Let's head over there. Now we're gonna sign in with our tplink email and password. And now you could see that this is through the tplink cloud and we could launch our controller remotely. So now in the next section, when we do our firewall rules, we'll still be able to access our controller to do some configuration. Now that all of our networks are created, our wireless networks are created, we have tagged the ports with the correct port profiles we need. We need to make firewall rules. So right now I'm connected to port four on the switch on this PC. And if you remember, that is connected to the staff network. So we could go IP config, and we'll be able to see here that we're getting an IP address 192.168.10.207. By default, inner VLAN routing is set to be on. So I could ping 192.168.0.1, which is the router. I could ping the controller, which is 192.168.1.25. So we need to make some firewall rules to block all inner VLAN routing. So how we do that, we go to our settings wheel and then we'll go to network security. And there's a few different lists here. For the gateway access list, rules of gateway ACL take effect only on the traffic, which is sourced from LAN ports and fall forwarded to the WAN. We could also do switch access list and we could do it at the EAP level, so the access point levels. We're gonna focus just by putting these rules, the switch ACLs. So we need to create rules for the staff network not to be able to reach any other network beside its own, as well as the IoT. The guest network, we put those guest policies in, so they will be blocked by default. So we're gonna to go to create new rule. I'm gonna say block staff to VLANs. We're gonna enable the firewall rule. The policy is going to be deny and we're going to set to all protocols. Under the source, we're going to have it a network and our source will be our staff network. And then for the destination, we're going to select network as well. And then we're going to select all the networks beside its own. So we'll select LAN, guest and IOT, and then we'll press apply. So if we bring up a command prompt, we shouldn't be able to ping the Amada controller. So I'll go ping. 192.168.0.125. And now the ping timeouts are being dropped. And the reason that I'm still able to do network configuration is because I'm, I'm doing it through the Amada TP-Link cloud. So next we need to create another rule to block the IoT to all VLANs. So we'll go block IoT to VLANs. It's gonna be deny, and then our source is gonna be IoT, and our destination is gonna be a network 
of LAN staff and guest and we'll press apply. So now all the inner VLAN routing is blocked, but we could still access our own interface. So the gateway for the staff network that I'm on right now is 192.168.10.1. If I open up a web browser and go to that, we'll be able to hit the router. So I'll go to 192.168.10.1, brings us to the TP link router interface. So we wanna block that out. So now we need to create a new group with the virtual router interfaces for the staff in the IoT, as well as the HTTP port, HTTPS, and SSH. So I'll press create new group, and it's gonna be an IP port group, and I'm gonna name it block router interface, HTTP, HTTPS, and SSH. So we're gonna add subnet. So we're gonna add the staff subnet, so it will be 192.168.10.1, and it's gonna be a slash 32, because we only wanna block out the virtual router interface, which is at the dot one. And then we're gonna add another subnet of the IoT gateway. So it will be 192.168.30.1 slash 32. And then we're gonna add ports. So we're gonna add port 80. You could add port 8080 if you want, add port 443, and then we're gonna add port 22 and press apply. So now our port group is created. We're gonna go back to network security. We're gonna to go to switch ACL. We're gonna create a new rule. The rule is gonna to be to block router interface, HTTP, HTTPS and SSH. And we're gonna enable this rule. Policy is gonna be deny, protocols will be all, and the networks will be staff in IoT. Now we're gonna go for the destination of an IP port group, and it's gonna be the block router interface, and we'll press apply. So now if we try to go back to the router interface at 192.168.10.1, we won't be able to connect. So we'll type in 192.168.10.1, and you can see that the site can't be reached. If you need one of these subnets to be able to reach another device on another subnet, we would need to create an allow rule. So we're gonna allow the staff network to be able to talk to the switch, which is on the admin network. So we'll go to create new rule. We'll go allow staff to switch. The policy is gonna to be to permit. Protocols will be all. It will be the source of our staff network and the destination will be an IP group. So we need to create a new IP group for the switch. So we'll click create. We're gonna call it switch. Now I know the IP address is 192.168.0.197 and we're gonna just put a slash 32 so it's only that device and press confirm. Right now, if we tried to ping it, we're on the staff network, we will be denied. 192.168.0.197 and you can see that the request time out. So now the source is staff and then the destination will be that new IP group of switch and we'll press apply. So even though we could see the permit rule in our firewall rules, we still can't access the switch. And that's because firewall rules go in order, so they go top down. So I'm gonna do a consistent ping on the switch, and then we need to put the allow staff to switch at the very top. We could just drag and drop. And we should see here that ping request will go through in a minute. And there you go, we could see that the pings are going through. So that's it for the TP-Link Amada setup. There are other things we could do like URL filtering, attack defense, VPNs, but I will be doing that in another video. This video will get you up and running and be able to create firewall rules to make your network secure. If you guys like this video, please hit the thumbs up button. If you're new here, please subscribe and hit the bell icon. All right, thanks.